the internet has changed our world, we still do many of the things we did before the internet arrived, but we do them differently. And in many ways, the internet is a lot like a looking glass. It reflects our world, but it also magnifies, distorts, and even accelerates the things that we do. As such, the internet has the capacity both for good and evil, making bad things that much more ugly. Essentially, we are all Alice now. And like Alice in Wonderland, we are falling down a digital rabbit hole, consuming on average eight hours of media every day. But what if we stopped and considered this? How we fall down the digital rabbit hole will affect the Wonderland that we find at the end of the tunnel. Unlike Alice, you see, we have the tremendous opportunity to shape the ensuing Wonderland and our true reality that it in turn reflects. But to do this, we must become conscious of the various pitfalls that we will encounter as we make our descent down the rabbit hole. So what might be some of the dangerous deeds that can make Wonderland such a disaster? Our sense of public space has shifted from what we can experience directly in front of us to an interconnected digital space that spans the world over. What we once might have only told our friends and family, we now surreptitiously capture with mobile phones, uploading to the internet instantly, and to a potential audience of 3.2 billion people, or half the planet. Such connectivity and the accompanying false sense of anonymity brings tremendous power. By posting information online, we can change a person's life in an instant for better or worse. It might seem like a great idea to snap a photo of a pair of boys walking down the street who bear an uncanny resemblance to Tweedledum and Dee, but what of the longer-term consequences to the unwitting subjects? Without our consent, we are being documented simply for going out into public, our likeness captured, spread online for the world to see, copied and turned into memes, and reposted as quickly as we attempt to take it down. Such vast and enduring exposure has devastating consequences, driving subjects to depression and even suicide. When bad things happen, like bombings or plane crashes, we rush to find answers. Human beings abhor ambiguity. We need to know. And like the caucus race in Alice in Wonderland, rumors and lies swirl to fill the void. But spreading disinformation pollutes the information space and breeds uncertainty and confusion. The digital wonderland is also full of mirrors, encouraging narcissism like never before. Now this might explain the 93 million selfies taken by Android users alone every day. And while we might find ourselves really great to look at, is our self-portrait the only thing we have to offer the world? Channeling your inner queen of hearts to publicly shame someone might help you work through your frustration in the moment. But again, what are the longer term consequences? Research by Brad J. Bushman has shown that venting your frustration actually makes you more angry and more inclined to be angry to future events. Looked at in this light, it's easy to see how our feeds can be so full of complaints and public shaming posts as we grow more addicted to online catharsis. But in all of this, we have a choice. As I mentioned earlier, we're still falling down the digital rabbit hole, and we can decide where we land as a human collective. As a fellow traveler in this digital rabbit hole, I believe it's time we seriously considered a new social etiquette that is befitting the wonderland that we'd like to spend time in. So what might be some of the new social, rules of social engagement? We can stop and remember that that person we find so funny is just a human too. And tomorrow you or I could be the subject of ridicule. And so we may only post content about people with their expressed approval. Or we can focus on things that are beautiful or inspire us or we can post about worthy causes that would otherwise be ignored without our attention. Every moment a day Finish it! Every day seems a lifetime Let me show you the way Knowing what we do about our fear of ambiguity among other cognitive biases the new social etiquette will require us to stop and think when we see a piece of clickbait in our social feed. Before sharing a rumor, 
we need to stop and ask ourselves, how do we know this to be true? Websites like Snopes are dedicated to helping. Google it. If you cannot find a reliable source to corroborate that story, don't share it. And if you find that story to be a piece of disinformation, use your time wisely to inform other people of the scam. Very quickly, we can control the quality of content that is spread online. Now, what if we devoted a fraction of our current selfie face time to reaching out to others? Did you know that there are some 4.5 million people living in hard to reach places in Syria, of which 400,000 are estimated to be trapped under siege? People like Wijdan here want so badly to connect with the outside world. She's part of a program called A Tale of Two Cities that connects Canadian and Syrian youth in digital peace building. Seeing these kids smile in the midst of war is worth the effort. It only takes a minute to show somebody that you care. Instead of complaining, we could choose to post about awe-inspiring discoveries or heartwarming moments. If it's engagement and shares that you are after, these posts will do as well, if not better, than posts containing hate and anger. And the best part is, you will have brightened somebody else's day as opposed to tearing somebody apart simply out of spite. The digital rabbit hole leads us to an online wonderland that is at once separate from our reality, but at the same time, it shapes our perspectives and thus each of us here and now in myriad ways. The digital wonderland is essentially ours to make of it what we will. And because of this intrinsic relationship, it's up to us whether this reality will be transformed into a positive wonderland that in turn shapes our real world for the better or not. The choice we must all make is what kind of world do we want to live in now? We can bully or we can support each other. We can spread disinformation and lies or we can spread the truth. We can take pictures of ourselves or we can reach out to those who feel isolated. We can complain, or we can post messages of gratitude. I challenge each of you here today to take the latter path. Help shape the digital wonderland for the better by improving how we communicate with each other online. You can start now by posting something beautiful or a message of gratitude using the hashtag from TEDxWithLove. There are 200 people in this room. We can make this idea trend. Thank you.